Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Gudmundsson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Hello and welcome to the Coffee Mug tutorials. Uh, today I wanted to jump back a little bit into um, bank reconciliations, or more like how to interact with the bank. Uh, in particular, ACH. Now, ACH is uh, sort of specific to the US, although we do have, uh, we can definitely send payments in other countries, but in the US it's called ACH. Uh, and I'm going to go over that. Um, in NAV 2018, we do have a little bit of a, a change there. So if we actually go into the payment journal, I'm going to do that right now. Um, so in the Kroners database, uh, we do have two payment journals. Um, one is bank and the other one is bank uh, conv or conv. And so those, the, this batch right here is intended to send uh, information to the bank automatically, whereas the other one is not. And you can see here that there is the allow payment export, which was by default checked on that, it wasn't yet uh, checked on this one. I did set it up for this one as well, but uh, let's check here. So if you actually go and take a look at the banks in the demo database, and I'm kind of leading you on here because there's a little bit of a setup, and the setup is very or can be very confusing. Um, if you look at Kronos, you can get an idea how to work this. You can see that uh, the transfers uh, uh, bank account right here is the one that's intended to be uh, used for transferring stuff. Now, this is all set up with European um, setups, so we're not interested in that. So uh, what I did is I went into the operating account and actually um, set up the US version. So if I go into the bank account itself, I can see here that we have something called country export format, and I can pick the US. We can actually pick uh, Canada, Mexico, and US. So this is specifically for North America. Uh, also, in here, we have to set up the Swift code. We got to set up the file that gets stored um, and the uh, ePay file creation number. And also, you have to specify the payment export format. So here, I'm just using EFT default US, but there are other formats available. Now, this is where it gets interesting. These formats, there's a lot of them. Some might be standard for the bank you're working with. Some might not be. So uh, I think this covers though mostly the ACH. ACH is sort of standardized in, uh, in the US. Uh, but the bank actually communication across the world is uh, not standard. Uh, I think European Union is pretty good with SEPA, but other than that, you, you have all kinds of stuff. All right, so we set this up here. Um, and if I go into, so I did set this up for the operating account. Uh, if I go into the payment journals, and I did um, actually work with uh, the normal bank payments, I believe, if I go in here. Uh, and I'm just going to create a new transaction here. You can see I've been creating a few of them. So this is just to this vendor. Now I need to specify the recipient bank account. Uh, so that is set up on the vendor card. And if I go into that one, just to give you an idea, so this is Topsum Bank, this is where we're sending the information. Here we need to say that this is used for electronic payments. That's important. Uh, and I believe you probably have to set up the Swift code, IBAN and all of that for the file to be proper, but I didn't do that. I just wanted to get a file out, uh, but I would definitely go ahead and find those and put that in there. All right, so I go ahead and send here $5,000 out of the operating account. I have to specify it's bank payment type electronic. Uh, and then I have these two things here, exported to payment file and uh, check printed. So if I actually go here and say export, I can pick a bank account number, which is gonna be the operating one. And I'm actually gonna just save this to PDF. And I just hit okay. Uh, and I'm gonna send this to See to I have a temp directory here. Someone, okay. 
So now I actually export it and you can see that check printed and exported filled out. What happened? If I actually go into my temp, I have a remittance advice. If I look at that, I get this uh, thing that I can print out basically to say that I paid it. But I don't have the file to send to uh, the back. So let me take a look at that. How do I get that file? So if I actually go into, I know this is, uh, <laughs> it is a little bit convoluted, but anyways, if I go here to generate EFT files, I get this. And so this is waiting here. Uh, this is telling me all of the stuff that I'm going to be sending into the file. And I can then go ahead and I can mark which ones I want to include, which one I don't want to include. I uh, know it's just one, so I'm just doing that. I could say generate EFT file. And again, I have to pick uh, where I'm going to put this. I'm going to put it again to uh, the temp here. And now it transfers. And if I take a look at my directory now, uh, the temp directory, let's see, this is. Uh, so I have here ACH operating count six. If I take a look at this one, this is the ACH file. So this file I could actually send to the bank or upload to the bank, and this will generate the payments in the bank uh, so the bank can send it out. So this is the actual ACH file. And you can see it's something you don't really create by hand. It's quite complicated. But this was the path in actually getting an ACH file out of an AVE. <laughs> so, um, Hope you got something out of that. If you were confused or stuck with AC8, maybe this uh, gave you an idea how to continue. If you like this, thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, until next time, thank you.